Hi, I'm Ben Solomon. In April 2012, I attended the National Space Symposium held at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs. And while there, I met Lisa Randall of Harvard University. She was doing a book signing for her then latest book, Warped Passages, Unraveling the Mysteries of the Universe's Hidden Dimensions. This is the book. And she, I had her autograph it. There you can see, to Benjamin Lisa Randall. I in turn showed her my book, An Introduction to Gravity Modification. And I pointed to her and told her, this is the new formula for gravitational acceleration. She did not seem amused. And she definitely was not expecting an unknown to come out out of the blue and show her a new formula for gravitational acceleration that was elegantly simple simple but then i may have been misreading her who is this lisa randall the back cover of her book says this lisa randall is an expert on particle physics string theory and cosmology a member of the american academy of arts and sciences and a winner of the alfred p sloan foundation research fellowship she has been a tenured professor at Princeton, MIT, and Harvard, and she is one of the most highly cited physicists in her field. She lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Wow. If our top theoretical physicists, who are particle physicists and string theorists, cannot solve the gravity modification problem and come up with the equation g is equal to tau c squared with their particle physics does not that mean that the life the useful life of particle physics is at its end you know there are some problems in nature that cannot be solved using analytical and mathematical methods that means methods like calculus for example Take this ball. I found it, got it at an exhibition. Assume that it is perfectly spherical and the mass density is perfectly identical across the ball. And let's assume that it's a solid ball. Now, in free space, away from any gravitational field of the galaxies or the stars, this ball will be a perfect sphere with a mass density that's perfectly uniform across the sphere. But what happens in a gravitational field where there are many non-linearities occurring in the field? First, we know that time slows down as you come down a gravitational field. Therefore, the clock run is at the top of the field, at the top of the ball, is running at a slightly faster rate than the clock at the bottom of the ball. But more importantly, the length contraction happens. So the length contraction is, is greater at the bottom of the ball than it is at the top of the ball. And secondly, mass increases as you go down a gravitational field. So the mass at the bottom of the ball is greater than the mass of the top of the ball. Now, while in free space away from any galaxies or stars, if we marked out two identical slices, one at the top of the ball and one at the bottom of the ball, they, their slices would be identical in shape and size and mass. Now, if we took this ball back to a gravitational field like the Earth's and we examined those two slices, what we would find is that the top slice, because of the transformations present, the deformations present, what we would find is that the top slice is slightly thicker and less mass than the bottom slice. The bottom slice would be slightly thinner and more massive than the top slice. This is uh, due to the distortions present in the gravitational field. And here comes the surprise. When we are far away from any galaxy or star, so that we do not feel any distortion, the ball does not feel any distortions, then we can calculate 
the center of mass of this ball and it's a fairly straightforward high school mathematics calculus now the moment we apply the distortions found in the gravitational field across this ball and we formulate a model for the center of mass of this mod of this ball we find that the solution cannot be found this very simple center of mass problem for a sphere in a gravitational field does not have an analytical solution and i've talked to others and and shown them the formulas and they've all come back and said that this center of mass problem in a gravitational field does not have an analytical solution there is however a numerical model solution and basically shows that the center of mass in a gravitational field depending on the size of the ball will shift downwards by anything from 10 to the minus 16 to 10 to the minus 23 meters so what does this mean for physics it means that there are problems in nature that cannot be solved using normal analytical methods and therefore we see particle theorists and string theorists adding dimensions to solve the mathematical problem. A problem that nature solves uh, every nanosecond of the day without running into analytical problems. Nature solves these problems, but mathematical methods are unable to solve these problems. So we end up with physicists adding dimensions to solve the mathematical problem and not necessarily the problem in nature. 